Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Trumpet Daily. Today, I want to refer you to two programs that my father recently produced for the Key of David. On November 2nd, he focused on how we need to be not just hearers of God's word, but doers as well. He showed from the Bible that Christ said people in our generation would make it through all the false thinking and false religions out there, and they would actually come to find God's precious and rare truth, but then not do anything with it. God doesn't force us to live his way of life, my father said. We have to respond to God's word and go after it. On the program this past weekend, my father focused us on the day of the Lord. He took us through the Bible and showed us the accelerating events that lead up to that prophetic day. And then he showed us how those events match up with what we're seeing right now in world news. He quoted this verse in Habakkuk 2, verse 2, which says, And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that reads it. So let's put these two recent messages together. God is telling us that we can't just listen to his word. We can't just tune in for an hour and then go about our day doing whatever we feel like doing. In fact, we can't just do God's word. We have to run with it. We have to run to obey God and to do his work. We have to run with this message. And as my father said, we have to run fast. When you consider the pace of prophetic events today, now is certainly the time to be running fast in our spiritual race. The time for sitting on the fence has passed. The time for hearing and not doing has passed. The time for doing but not running has passed. The time has come to run. This gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world. And he said unto me, you must prophesy again. I picked up a book at an airport recently titled Born to Run, and the, the premise of the book is as straightforward as the title. Human beings were made to run, the author said. Of course, a lot of people don't think they're very good at running or they don't like it. Most people who don't like it think running is uh, too hard or maybe it's bad for your health, your joints or whatever. But then there are the few, those with a runner's mindset, a small minority, I suppose, who have learned to love running. And that mindset is what God takes to a spiritual level in Habakkuk 2. Write the vision that he may run who reads it. Spiritually speaking, we have to learn to love running. God says you were born to run. We need to hear and do and run after this truth, as I said there at the top. Now that takes effort. It takes sweat. It takes discomfort. It does require training, building stamina, one stride at a time. So how well are you running in this spiritual race that we're in. God the Father and Jesus Christ are right there running alongside you, cheering you on, you could say. They know we can do this. They're there giving us water, food, energy, all the encouragement, the help that we need. They'll even take us by the hand. The Bible assures us that they'll never leave us nor forsake us. But we have to keep running we have to be concerned about our effort, our form, our stamina, the pace. You've probably seen runners in uh, a marathon or at an Olympic event. The greatest runners in this world are very deliberate in how they run. And, and pacing is one of the most important parts of the race. They don't sprint and then slow down and walk, and then sprint and jog, and then sprint and walk. They do what they've done hundreds of times, thousands of times perhaps, while training. They set the maximum pace that they can sustain 
and then they stick to it. And then what happens as they approach the finish line? Well, that's when they take it to another level, and it's awesome to see it. My father's program was important because he was basically saying that we're in the gun lap of the spiritual race that we're running in. This is the last lap. We're nearing the finish line. And that means it's time to give it everything that we've got to finish this work. Let's notice Psalm 119 to begin with. If you'd like to read along, go and get your Bible so that you can read these verses with me. And you'll see today that there's quite a few references to running in the scriptures. There's even that example in uh, 2 Samuel 18 about Zadok's son, Ahimeaz, who wanted to deliver this good news to David. And then he was told to wait. And another messenger came along and took off with the, the news, the message. And Ahimeaz still wanted to go. He still wanted to run. He was so eager. And then even after that first messenger left, he was turned loose and they said, go ahead and deliver the news. And he ended up passing the first runner. He was so eager. He was so excited about delivering the message, good news to King David. It's a wonderful attitude that that young boy had. It showed how eager he was to serve God in the, the David musical that we put on, uh, on this stage last year. There was an entire song devoted to that scene, to that runner, to that boy, that lad, who could not wait to run. And of course, there's a great lesson in that for us. God wants us to run. He wants us to be excited about running after him running after His truth, running in support of His work. Notice this verse here in Psalm 119. This is verse 32. It says, I will run the way of your commandments when you shall enlarge my heart. This is King David writing. I will run the way of your commandments. I will run after you. It's not enough just to know the truth, as I said there at the top. We've got to pick it up and run with it. Just like a Ahimeaz. Zadok's son, we've got to take that message and run. As Habakkuk said, make it plain, this vision. Write it down on tables so that he that sees it might run with it, might really take off. If you think about the way that this world is, there's so much lethargy and lukewarmness in the world today. So many problems out there. People just don't want to do anything about it. They've become casual, lazy, Spiritually speaking, you look at some of the scriptures uh, in the Bible that talk about the way the world runs or what it runs after specifically. Here's Proverbs, Proverbs 1 and verse 16. For their feet run to evil and make haste to shed blood. That's what, too often what we see in the world today. People who are so eager to run after evil things, to pursue after evil. Another one here in Isaiah 59, their feet run to evil and they make haste to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. Wasting and destruction are in their paths. People run after things like this, thinking it'll satisfy them, thinking it'll make them happy. And then all the while they, they, they make fun at, at those who, who are running after good. They're seen as the extreme ones or as the ones that aren't having fun or aren't experiencing uh, the good life. People today are scoffed at for striving to obey God. Look at, even in schools, young children will make fun of other young children for, for doing good things, like getting good grades, trying to be obedient, trying to follow instructions from the teacher. Those kinds of things today too often are made fun of. They're laughed at. They're ridiculed. But God wants us to not be deterred in our obedience to him and to his laws. To not care so much about what the occasional critic might say. 1 Peter 4 and verse 4, just another one here from the board. Wherein they think it strange that you run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you. See, that's the way the world reacts. They think it's strange that you're not just following a multitude to do evil, like it says in the book of Exodus. And yet God specifically <laughs> commands us not to do that. Don't go along with the rest, the majority. 
Develop that runner's mindset where you run after God and his way of life, his laws, his precepts, his commandments. The world thinks it's strange to do good, to obey God, but we can't. God's people can't think that way. Let me just show you another proverb. This is Proverbs uh, 18 and uh, verse 10. It says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and they're safe, it says there. The righteous run to God for safety. Do you run to God in time of trouble, in time of stress, in, during great adversity? Do you run to God for safety? Do you run with urgency like a Ahimeaz? Do you really go after God? In time of need, we can't get bogged down in the cares of this world. We can't go after our problems relying only on our own strength. We've got to run to that strong tower that is God and really lean on him for help in time of need. Let's go over to the New Testament, this time in the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 12. We'll see what the Apostle Paul has to say about this spiritual race that we're in. As I said, there's quite a few scriptural references to this, this marathon race that we're running. Hebrews 12 and verse 1, it says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Notice there, Paul is saying that sin is like weights that you'd strap around your ankles right before heading off on a race. And he says, set those aside. Set those sins aside. Put aside those weights and just take off running for God. Be as light-footed as you can. Once you read the vision, once you get the truth, once you've worked your way through with God's help, all the confusion, all the false religion and false doctrine in this world, and you've received the precious truth of God, make sure you do something with it. Don't sit back. Don't be casual. Don't be ho-hum about the truth of God. Do something, God says. That's what my father's been telling us on these programs recently. We've got to do something with it. We've got to run with it. Baptism is just the starting point. The lead up to baptism, then you've been baptized, the hands of a minister have been laid upon you, and you receive the Holy Spirit, and then what? Well, then it's time to run. Then it's time to take off. Look at verse 2. It says here, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. See, we're in a race, and we've got to run on the course that God sets. God says, this is the, the course that you're on. Here's where you need to run. Our job, as I said, is to, to run, to run for God. But we've got to follow his instructions, and then run with patience. Be concerned about strength and stamina and pace just like that marathon runner start off with a pace that you've been training to sustain and then as you see that finish line draw near that's the time to really kick it in that's the time to start sprinting and look God wants us to look to the example of Jesus Christ read the rest of chapter 12 on your own time and see the example there the way he endured through trial and test, the way he finished the race. I have finished this work. He said right there at the end of his physical life, I've finished. That's really the great tragedy of our, of our day, the great tragedy of the era that we're in. Talked about in Revelation 3. So many of God's people who started off in this race they started off perhaps with a sprint, but they haven't sustained that pace. Many of them have dropped out of the race. 
Others have slowed down and maybe they're just barely walking, spiritually speaking. God says run, 1 Corinthians 9, a couple more verses here. This too from the Apostle Paul, 1 Corinthians 9, and starting in verse 24. Look to that example. Jesus Christ, it says in 1 Peter that we are to follow in his steps. So he's out front. He's like the pace setter in this race. And we look to Jesus. We look to his example. We look to the head of this church. And we follow. We follow after him. This is 1 Corinthians 9 and verse 24. It says, Know you not that they which run in a race run all, but one receives the prize. So run that you may obtain. Run, Paul says. Run to obtain the prize. Run with a positive and confident attitude. Run knowing that God is with you that God and Jesus Christ are right alongside you, helping you along, encouraging you, providing you with drink, providing you with food, sustenance, encouragement, cheering. But they can't run for you. That's the thing. They can't push you. They can't shove you down the course. They lead you. That's the way the Holy Spirit works, as Romans 8 brings out. As many as are led by the Spirit, as many as are led by Jesus Christ, to use what Paul said there in Hebrews 12. Be positive, be, be confident even in Christ. Don't have a defeatist approach. Don't say, well, I, I can't run. It's too hard. It's too hard on my joints. Too much training, too much work. I don't know if I can finish. That's the attitude of a defeatist. God says, you run. Run that you might obtain the prize. How about that for an admonition? Go after first prize. Go after the award. Go after the ribbon. Verse 25, it says, And every man that strives for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible I mean, any man who's striving for the, the mastery is temperate in all things. That's just, Paul again is continuing on with this, this sports analogy, saying that we're like athletes in training. And if you've watched any of them, as I said at the top, a marathon runner or someone performing at, at the Olympics, you know there's a great deal of, of intense training that goes into it. You know that they're very strict about their diet, about their exercise, their training, their rest, their sleeping, their everything. As they get ready to perform, as they get ready to race. Verse 26 says, I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beats the air. I mean, Paul knew the course. He uses the analogy here of a boxer too saying, I, I know what I'm fighting. I know what I'm going up against. I know what I'm out there trying to do with God's help. I'm going to swing away at the enemy. I'm going to run in this race. I'm going to press forward toward the prize. He talks about that prize over in Philippians 3. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth, unto those things which are before or in front of me, he says, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I'm forgetting about the past and moving forward. I'm reaching forward, pressing ahead to the prize. Just finishing off here in 1 Corinthians 9, notice verse 27, but I keep under my body and, and bring it into subjection lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Paul didn't want to be a hypocrite. Paul didn't want to be a failure. He wanted to be an example to the brethren. I don't want to drop out of this race. I've been telling you to run, so I'm out there running. I'm out there in this race. I'm working on my problems. I'm leaving them behind me and moving forward with God. And he says, I want you to do that as well. One last verse, we don't need to turn there, but just, just look at this later. Isaiah 40, verse 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. 
They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run, it says, and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Your strength, my strength, is in God. That's where we obtain the, the real power to run in this race, to sustain a fast pace, to kick in that gun lap pace, the kick, as they say. God will give us that strength, that power, that speed that we need. But we've got to go to him in prayer, in Bible study, and really draw on that strength, draw on that power. I want to encourage you to go back and, and review those programs, both of them played here in the month of November, on being not just hearers of the Word of God, but doers as well. And then the more recent one from just this past weekend, on the day of the Lord, and that reference to Habakkuk 2 and verse 2, run with this message. Look at where we are in Bible prophecy. Look at where we are right here at the end of this age. So many amazing parallels that we can learn from. This is an article we posted at the uh, PCOG site, but this, this article is titled The Gun Lap, Are You Running to Win? See, are you running to obtain the prize? Go back and read this from our website and look at those two programs that were recently aired uh, for the Key of David. Thank you for joining us today, and we'll see you next time on The Trumpet Daily.